morning, Monarch Homestead. I'm already tired and it's afternoon. I had a lot of running around to do. And so I'm home now for at least a while. And I'm going to try crock pot banana bread because we're not using the crock pot tonight. We are using the grill. So I am following this recipe verbatim. I have already softened one third cup of butter. I have my sugar here. I have my eggs here, but they're not beaten as they say. Um, I have my flour, my salts, my baking powder, and my baking soda. And I have my ripe bananas. They are not mashed yet, but you know, that doesn't take long to mash those bananas. So um, I've got those and boy, are they ready for using, I'm telling you what. And I'm not gonna do the walnuts. I don't think, I don't have walnuts. I don't think, and I, I just don't, I'm not a walnut girl. Not for that anyway. So uh, it says to put your butter and sugar in a large bowl and beat it until well combined and fluffy. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I am using my KitchenAid mixer over here in the back side of the tiny kitchen. Won't be able to get you a tight shot because everything's kind of crowded here. But at least I'm not over there on the dining room table. And you can hear my rooster out there, the Admiral, crowing his head off because he hasn't had any attention today apparently which is his own fault. He can get his own action and all he has to do is step up to the plate. And that is what we are expecting of him. Because I have an incubator in the shelf in there, in the room we call the no door room. There's a lot of no door rooms and no door closets and things in this house. Um, but yeah, um, waiting on him to get, get his act together so I can uh, hatch some little babies. Um, it'll be future egg layers. Uh, so while that is um, creaming and fluffy, I'm supposed to add my beaten eggs. So I guess I better go run over and get me a bowl to beat my eggs in. I'll be right back. Okay, so. I just got me a cereal bowl because that's what was handy. And I'm gonna get my little bowl I put my eggshells in after I crack them. Give them back to my chickens. Help to their cast calcium. I had there was somebody that was mentioning on abundant permaculture about having eggshells that are um, very thin and talking about they were discussing putting um, eggshells in to whether you put it in with your feed or whether you put it in a separate container. I always put it in a separate container um, because that way I know um, if I need to give them more. Uh, so have you noticed with the older models of KitchenAid that the bowl is shaped in such a way that there is like a groove at the bottom and everything gets stuck in there and doesn't get mixed? It's really quite frustrating. So I'm on the market probably for if I could get another bowl, but I think that the, the new bowls are differently designed. You have to buy a whole new mixer in order to get the new bowl design. <laughs> yeah, that never happens in the world, does it? So I'm going to go get me a spatula from the other room because that's the only way I can get it out of that little groove so that everything gets mixed. Because right now, by softened butter, it's not acting like it's very softened. So, let's try that again, shall we? Come on, come together. Yeah, I don't know the whole song. But I know it needs to come together. So let's look at the next step after we uh, put the eggs in, see if there's something we can measure out ahead of time here and get it ready to go. Oh, let's see. Grab a different bowl. Grabbed. And mix together the flour, salt, baking powder, and baking soda. We can do that. So I've got baking powder here and the measurement on the baking powder is one teaspoon. One teaspoon it is. And 
the measurement on the baking soda is, whoops, oh, half a teaspoon. Oh, I had grabbed the wrong one. I get confused sometimes about soda and baking, so I have to stop myself and really read and concentrate. And yes, folks, I had breakfast and I just had lunch. So, my husband made me waffles this morning. I think he did it because I was taking him to work this morning. He was picking up his motorcycle that is fixed, thank goodness. And we are planning a little day trip on the motorcycle. It'll be my first time in quite a while since I started having severe vertigo. And it's on its downside right at the moment. I do have my moments. I do seem to feel after I've been on the motorcycle like I'm falling over backwards. But I also experience that when I am on um, a plane, when I get off a plane. So. That's not good. I'll fit in the jar. Ooh, ooh, we have cream. I'm gonna go ahead over here and put my two beaten eggs in. Get that out of the way. Whoops, I'm in a mess. What's new, Sunday? Um, so I have my baking soda and my flour and my um, baking powder in here. So it was baking powder, one teaspoon, baking soda, half a teaspoon, and my flour, all-purpose flour, is one and three quarters cup. And my half cup is in my mason jar. And knowing me, I'll make a mess. So I'm going to use a smaller one just to get in there and measure it out. And I believe my one cup measurement. Oh, there it is. Used it this morning to make waffles for me. So that's clean. I'll just grab that. That was convenient. And we'll use the smaller size to get the flour out. So again, we're doing one and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour. I use the back side of the measuring cup to flatten it out to make sure everything's good. So there's one. All right, a little clanking sound there. And I don't have a three-quarters cup, obviously, so I'm just gonna fill it higher than halfway and lower than one, with one cup. And there it is. In it goes. All right, all the dry ingredients are all together. That's good. I'm just gonna wash all these. We're just gonna already. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape this because obviously that little crevice you can't trust it. Make sure everything's actually blended like it's supposed to be. And yep, there's some sugar residue down there. So there's that. Give that another go. Down in there now. I'm going to give this a quick stir of the flour make sure and make sure that it's all blended together. Okay. Line up my bananas here because it's probably the next thing going in if I'm not mistaken. Let's see what it says. says to sprinkle a little bit of the flour mixture and put a little bit of the banana in. So I'm going to put, I have these in sections, but I haven't got it mashed yet, so I need to mash that. Let's use the back of a fork, that'll work just fine. A little harder on the arthritis, but it'll work. Last time I used a potato masher, if you remember, I was mashing whole potatoes in a crock pot and you didn't get to see what a mess it made but I told you all about it. This time you should be safe. Okay, so put a chunk of this banana in there. And sprinkle some flour in there. That's the other thing I like about the other KitchenAid. They have a little plastic guard that, put, that goes on it. And then there's like a chute that goes up so you can put your mixture in and not have any, you know, stuff coming back at you. Obviously, I'm going to have to scrape the side of this at the end to make sure everything's blended. But I'm going to go ahead and keep adding. And at the end, I'll make sure I get everything blended together completely. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and pre-read here. Um, 
Pour your batter into a greased standard loaf pan that will fit in your six. What? What loaf pan fits in there? I hope my loaf pan fits in here. I apparently didn't read my recipe ahead of time. Oh, cross your fingers, folks. Cross your fingers. I don't know. We shall see. I'm gonna go get it here. Let's go ahead and put another portion in there. Let me go run and get my loaf pan. Cross your fingers, guys. blended up nicely. Okay, one more to go around with that. See, I, th I thought I read, maybe I was looking at other recipes that said you were supposed to coat your um, the crock pot with um, parchment paper, which is why I got parchment paper in here. Wrong! Okay. Let's see, put the bread pan in the slow cooker. You can pour about half a cup of water in the crock around the side of the pan. Do I need to do that if it doesn't sit down in there? Okay, so the water is if your pan does not fit. So if you do not have a rack and your pan fits all the way down, then you pour water in. But we're not because it doesn't. Um, and it says to put paper towels over the pan before you put the lid on. Got it. All right. Okay, so we got a good a good bit here. It's all nice and blended. So that off of there. That off of there. I'm on now. Move our recipe. Lock our mixer. Unplug that. Limited space means moving and shaking. That's what it means. I'm gonna put this over here for now. 
on the dining room table, out of the way. I get my mixing bowl back over here with my pan, and I laid the spatula on, I got it all over the side, that's okay. All right, I'm gonna pour that in that pan. It's already greased. Usually banana bread is like one of the only things I bake. I don't really bake a lot anymore. It's just too much fat. I don't even make cookies anymore. The only time I used to make cookies, Christmas cookies or Christmas or cookies otherwise for my grandson. But we live so far apart now, I don't do that. He's probably too old for it. You probably say, gee, Nana, I don't want to do that. I'm gonna shake that a little bit and get it kind of level. Sit that in that crock pot on the edges. <coughs> Pardon me. All right now, we're gonna sit level, guys. There we go. And take the paper towels, lay it over the top, as it said, because all that condensation. Then, let's get our recipe back again. It says, um, be careful not to get the pepper towel in the batter. Cover and cook. And cover it. Make sure that paper towel is kind of taut. Close that puppy up. Whew, that's loud. And cook, cover and cook on high for two to three hours um, until you can pass the toothpick test, which we know what that is, right? So select, we want it on high for two to three hours. I'm gonna put it on three hours. And hit start, and off it goes. So it is, see what time it is. It is 12.55. So in roughly four o'clock, we should have banana bread. Cool. There you go, I got this online. Crock pot banana bread, recipes that crock. I love it. I'm gonna have to check out more of the recipes because that sounds really cute. Um, love it. All right, well, I'll let you know how it tastes. Tonight we're having fish on the grill and I'm gonna make him boil some water for me and make some macaroni and cheese with the good old Velveeta log. That's the only way I will eat that cheese. Um, and probably some cauliflower because I have had cauliflower that needs to be used. I didn't realize I wasn't going to have a stove. So that's probably going to be it um, for um, the Growing Monarch Reno kitchen segment. Um, I can update you on the kitchen. Let me take you in there and see what's going on. Let's turn on the light because we can. Whoops. One of them. Ta. Okay. So Carrie is mudding. This is day two mudding. Um, so now I'm supposed to go back with a wet sponge or a damp sponge and I'm supposed to smooth it down. According to the um, container down there on the floor uh, and some advice, you're not supposed to sand it. It makes a big mess and it takes off too much. So I'm supposed to use a damp sponge and just smooth over it until it looks smooth. And then once that dries, which shouldn't take too long, then I'm going to use my Kilts primer, no plug there, and um, and do this wall. And once that is primed, yes, once that is primed, hallelujah, <laughs> then we are going to, I believe, set the upper cabinet to the right, adjoin the center. We will then stop, mark for our range hood, make said cuts for range hood, install said range hood on the downside. Then he will have to go up in the attic and do install for above, which probably will be on delay. Even if he does that tonight, it will probably be delayed for completion until the storm passes that's coming tomorrow. Um, he did do um, surge, um, the surge uh, outlets on this one, which controls that one and that one and the one around the corner, this one and the fridge. So if we have a power surge, we are protected. So that's cool. 
Um, I think these also control the outlets on each side as well over here. And he has two more he's going to put in the bathrooms. Um, so that's what I'm supposed to be doing, even though it's already one, almost one o'clock. Um, I am waiting for a roof guy to hopefully show up and take a look at our roof. And then um, I'll have a better idea of what's going to happen with that. And I am going to clean up after my baking. And then I'm going to go out. We'll take a walk out and see the chickens. I have some food scraps for them. I don't know where my dogs are. What you doing, doggy doggies? You ready to come in? They have this little area right now. It's not pretty big. They're kind of bummed because they really love the running around and terrorizing everything. But man, it was so cold getting a bath for them. So they should be happy. Stay clean for a little while, please. <laughs> Hey, I forgot. I was going to mix up some of this banana cream pudding too. So I've got two of these packs, these jello packages. And for quick set, let's see. Two cups of cold milk. So if I do two, that's four cups of cold milk. So that's what we're going to do. It's already put it away. Pudding mix and milk whisk. Okay. Put one in over the other. So I got mine just all cleaned up and everything. So I'm gonna put these in, and I'm going to use the milk that I got at the farmer's stand, which is comes in this cool glass bottle that is returnable. It's actually from Russellville, Kentucky. Wow, all the way from Russellville. I don't know where that is from here, but it is low temp pasteurized at 150 degrees, non homogenized from Farm Direct from Kentucky Proud. The word, oh, I love this. Dude, I've got to show you this, okay? I didn't realize this before. It's JD Country Milk. I'm gonna plug them. Um, ooh, it has a, it says cream, whole milk cream line. Mmm, -hmm, honey. All right, so I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that down at the bottom, right here? Let's zoom in, see if we can zoom in. Well, we can't zoom in, but forward. It says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 105. Gotta love it. You gotta love it, right? So I don't know if shaking is necessary, but I'm shaking. I love the glass bottle. It's just it's so cool. It just reminds me of days gone by. Apparently there's still one of these guys. And it's popped up. Ooh. It definitely has a cream line, let me tell you. All right, so again, let's look back and make sure we are doing it right and not messing it up. It is um, two cups of cold milk for a package, so that's four cups. And this is a two cup measurement. Come on, baby. Ooh, there's that cream line. That cream line is so thick, it's like a stopper. <laughs> Check it out, man. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> It is. It's like a stopper on top. It's almost like cream cheese. Lord have mercy on my soul. I'm licking it. Oh my gosh. That is like heaven in a jar. Oh my Lord. Yes, you can lick that off the floor. I will let you. So there is two cups. The dog's like, oh, that's really good, Mom. Like, no kidding. Plop that cream into it. It's going to make that pudding that much richer. <gasps> I made a mess, but I can do. And two more. Four cups, right? That's what we said. Okay. And always I have my spatula handy. Clean up my mess that I made. Precious milk all over the place. And I'm going to do something I don't usually even do. I've, I've been kind of turned off with by the milk that you buy in the store. Um, so I don't really usually even partake straight up milk very often. But now after tasting just even just that cream, I must. I must, I must, I must. I'm gonna have to go get me some more. 
I'm going to finish this so I can get my deposit back. <clears throat> wow. That tastes nothing like store-bought milk. That extra non-homogenized low temp pasteurize um it's good very good Ooh. Mm. yum okay turn the sucker on eat that all mm. oh my gosh mm. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry guys, I'm really enjoying this. Mm. 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 Yum. Mm. All done. Alright guys. Pudding's pudding, especially when it's from a, a box. I've never made it from scratch before. Um, let me clean this up and we'll take off outside. Hey y'all. We're outside now. Get my boots. Can't wait to have that back area all fixed so that I can walk straight out my back door to my chickens, to my garden, everything. So I've got some boots, some scraps, of lettuce, and such. We're gonna go see those chickens. It's a beautiful day. Look at this. Hard to believe that tomorrow is supposed to be so horrible. Made a trip over to the tiny house and picked up some things, took some trash down um, to a friend's dumpster, which is really great. And wanted to get some stuff that I was a little more concerned that might blow around in a bad storm. Get that out of there. So still some stuff to do, but it's getting there. So we're gonna move the chickens tonight. That will technically maybe one more pull on that fence line but with the storm coming I'm gonna bring them down here so that the deck will cut some of the wind because that tarp is already pretty torn up oh no their door shut they can't even get out maybe I'll have to move them now and move the fence they're probably pretty ticked off because the water's outside oh you could get out okay they got out it, I was mis misreading the situation. Hopefully you won't blow off of there. It's hot and windy. Hi! What happened? Is it windy? Is it really windy? from my hubby. What do you think? They are awfully busy right now. Not sure if I'd be successful or not, but I'm thinking about trying. Let's give it a whirl. What do we have to lose, right? It's not like I don't move that tractor by myself anyway. 
Well, now that they're outside, I should be able to do it. May take me a couple steps to get to the top. That's right, but.
Lordy, that was hard.